This is Excel 2016, Module 10, Part 7. So we're going to actually begin working with the solver. If you have not added the software, please go back and view the last video. If you go to your Data tab, you should see Solver at the right side of your ribbon. Let's get into our Cultivare workbook. So we have a worksheet called Product Mix. And what we're trying to figure out is we have several different products. There's four of them. We're trying to figure out how many of each product should we be making and selling. So let's take a look at how we can work with this workbook, worksheet, excuse me. So on the optimal line, I'm going to enter some numbers. I'm going to say 3,500. In C11, we're going to say 3,500. And then in D11 and E11, we're going to add 2,500. So you can see that that is a different product mix. And what can happen with this product mix is different component parts are needed. So one of the issues I have to take into account is, for example, front axles went negative. Well, that can't happen because once I run out of them, then I have to stop making whatever item uses that particular part. Some of the other things that we can look at is what the change is in our net income. So not only did we run out of a part, but the optimal mix that we chose caused our net income to go down. So now let's see what would happen if we changed our optical, optimal mix to 2,500 for the first one, 2,500 for the second one, 3,500, $3, excuse me, for the third, and 3,500 for the fourth. Notice that allowed our income to go up. And let's see if we ran out of any component parts. Oh, we still ran out of something. We ran out of our power front axles. Oh, and our variable speed controls. So what we want solver to do for us is we want it to locate the optimal mix. What product mix here is going to set our income to be the maximum, the highest you can come up with, given certain constraints or things that we can't do. So for example, none of these component parts can become negative. They can't go below zero. That's what we're going to try to accomplish with Solver. Now the book does this in multiple steps. I'm probably not going to press Solve as many times as the book does. So let's go ahead and take a look at what Solver does for us. We're going to go to the Data tab, and you're going to open up Solver. All right, so the first thing that you have to do is you have to tell it what your goal is. So if my goal is to optimize or make this optimal net income 
as high as I can make it. I'm going to click on C24 and make it the maximum I possibly can. Then the next question is, what am I going to change? I am changing the values that are in my optimal prop product mix. So I'm going to highlight B11 through E11. That's the information that's changing. All right, so let's go ahead and do it the way the book does and talk about how this works. So if I click Solve, it comes up and it says, do you want to keep the solution or restore individual, uh, the original values? Well, let's look here. These numbers are so large, and the reason they're so large is because we haven't put any rules in. If you come scroll down, you would see that it made a whole bunch of items negative in our components because we haven't put those rules in yet or constraints. So let's go ahead and look at restore original values. All right, the next thing we want to put in on our solver I'm going to open it back up, are the constraints. Okay, so we're going to come down here into this constraint area, and we're going to click Add. So the first constraint that we are going to enter is that C19, our optimal quantity produced in total, must be equal to, so notice you have different logical functions here, and we're going to type in the answer of 12,000. Now if you have, if you click OK, you can see it adds the constraint. If you have multiple constraints to add, it's easier though, once you click Add, to keep clicking Add until you're done. So let's go ahead and add another constraint. We're going to say that B11 through E11. Now notice, I don't have to pick one cell for a constraint. I can do a range. And on your SAM project, if it's worded as a range, that's how you need to enter it. If it's worded as an individual cell, then that would be how you would need to enter it. On an exam that I would be grading, you can do it either way. You could do four constraints, one for B11, one for C11, one for D11, and one for E11. But as you could imagine, that's more typing and more room for error. So our optimal product mix, we don't want any individual product to be less than 2,500. So they have to be greater than or equal to 2,500. I'm going to add that. Now, here's another thing I'm going to show you. So if I selected a range of cells and I said they have to be an INT, which is an integer, when I try to add that, I'm going to get an error message that says integer constraints can only be on the variable cells which are our changing cells. So if on an assignment this is the range you were given and you get that error message, then you should take a look back at what you set for your changing cells.
So we're going to change this range to B11 through E11, which was our changing cells. We're going to say they have to be integers. So we're going to add that. And then we have one more constraint that we're going to use. We're going to come over here and look at our component parts. See, each product uses various component parts. And down here, we know how many we have available. This will calculate how many we are using. We need to make sure that J28 through J46, how many we have left, never goes below zero. So that answer must be greater than or equal to zero. That's going to be my last constraint. So I'm going to click on OK. And now when you get back to the screen, you can review them. Now remember I told you if it wouldn't let you enter an integer, you need to come back and review what you have up here. All right. So now once we have all of our constraints in there, we are ready to solve our solver. So we're going to come down here. We're going to click the word solve. When it comes up with an answer, this is what we will get. So we're going to take a look at a couple of different options. First of all, now that we had our constraints in, we're going to keep our solver solution. I want to generate an answer report. And if you want the display of the answer report to have the outline buttons on it, you can check this box. And you'll see that in just a minute. And then click OK. And you'll see that our solver created an answer report. These buttons over here are what the outlining was referring to. So if you look at your um, answer report, you'll notice it tells you this was the original amount that we had in net income. But you want to remember that we started out running out of product with this number. We get our final result here. Then we can also see each of our constraints. So down here on the constraints, if I want to see more detail, because remember this is a range, you click that plus and it opens up all the options. So if you look here, what a binding constraint means is that that stopped or affected your results. So we hit 12,000 produced and it had to stop. Another binding one, our front axle went to zero. That means we ran out of that part, and so it had to stop making any of the component or any of the products that used this part as a component. And we had three parts that we ran out of. So if we we're working with this. One question I would have as a company manager, if I bought more of those, could I have had 
more profit by increasing the quantity of the front axles that we had. So these are some of the things that you can look at with our solver. Let's go back and we're going to do one more time. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to change this back to 3,000 for each one of them. That even mix. Now let's see, did we run out of anything? Okay, so with the even mix, we are not running out of any components. Our other criteria that we had are met. So that 300,000 of income would not violate any of our constraints. So then if we open up solver and we tell it to solve, this time instead of checking the box for the outline, I'll show you what it looks like with it unchecked. So I'm going to keep my solver solution. I'm going to click that I want an answer report. Now you get a second one. Notice it just keeps numbering them. So now you can see it went from the 300,000 to 325. So it went up. And you notice you no longer have the pluses. So it just lists every single cell that could possibly have a constraint. A non-binding one means that did not affect your decision. So we had more than enough of these power react, uh, rear axles. So that shows you your solver. The next video is going to look at what would happen if we tried to save our solver and then maybe change the constraint or the rule, excuse me, the objective. So let's take a look at that.